Hi friends, Scott here. I want to talk about cassettes versus vinyl. Now, even though that's a clickbaity title, uh, the answer is both. Um, both are awesome. One is a little bit more affordable, um, although one is a little bit more favored by music listeners. Um, but we're going to talk about that as, as much as possible. Uh, I do have a checklist about manufacturing tapes because I did another video about um, making tapes. I don't have a checklist about making vinyl yet. I'll work on it, but I have a checklist and I also have a bunch of resources for record labels uh, and independent artists, but mostly for record labels. Go to otherrecordlabels.com for all of our resources there. Our tape checklist on how to make tapes is otherrecordlabels.com slash tapes. Okay. I want to talk to you about uh, cassettes versus vinyl. This is my record. Uh, it's the only one that I could find that was that I had a tape and a vinyl of the same thing. So I'm not self-promoting here, but sure, maybe I am. Um, at, the, at the same time, I do have some like 80s uh, records that I could have used, but I'm going to use my own here because I made both of these. Um, so let's talk about uh, the, the pros and cons of both. And I'm going to talk about the cost to manufacture first off. If you do a high run of both, then you can get your costs down. I mean, it's actually going to cost you more, but your cost per unit comes down the more you do. The reason being is because there are some actual fixed costs. So, for example, when you uh, make a, a pad stamper for your cassette tape, which basically stamps the information on the front of the tape, um, you pay for that once. And then you, um, same thing with vinyl, your stampers um, for making the actual uh, vinyl is something you pay for once and then your per unit cost is much lower. And so if you were to do a hundred records, your cost, something like this would be probably $15 each. Whereas if you were to do 200 or 300, this kind of the sweet spot, you could get it much lower down to like eight, seven, eight or $9 each. Uh, and then you have more chance of making a profit. You just have to sell them all. Same thing with tapes. If you're closer to 50 tapes, um, then you can make a more chance of making a profit. Tapes can cost you um, upwards of $10 each if you only did like 10 or 20. Um, and uh, so that's just not a great number. If you're doing 50 or even 100 tapes, then you can get them down to 2 or $3. And then when you sell them to fans for 7 8 or $9, then you're definitely going to make a profit. And so you kind of have to commit to selling them as so that you can commit to a higher number. Same with vinyl. If you're doing 100 or 200 units, um, 100 is, is tough. Uh, but if you're doing 200 units, then you're getting your price down to 10 or $11. And if you're selling them for 20, then a much greater chance of breaking even. Shipping is something I also want to talk about. It's very tough to ship vinyl. You actually have to get a cardboard sleeve, which I didn't bring one up here. I'm a dummy. I have a box of them in the basement. They cost about a dollar each, and you have to buy them in quantities of 100 unless you can split with another label or another artist. Um, but uh, these boxes um, end up costing... Now, in America, you have something called media mail, and you can ship these quite inexpensively, like 3 to $5.00. Um, but when you're shipping to Europe or Europe shipping to North America, or if you're Canada shipping to America or Canada shipping within Canada or Canada shipping to Europe, um, the cost can get really steep. I mean, the very least in Canada, I'm shipping these are $10. Uh, that's locally. So when you get much further or internationally, then it's closer to $15. In fact, it actually cost me one time $40 to ship uh, to Switzerland, I think. That was crazy. Um, so... Overseas shipping is really tough. Sometimes you actually put them on a boat and it takes like six to eight weeks or more to ship. Shipping vinyl is really tough. You also have to put them in these boxes. You, it's nice if you include some freebies in there um, and it takes a long time to get there and you hope that the record isn't damaged. Um, I know that shipping domestically in America is a lot easier, but it's still something to consider. Shipping vinyl is really tough. If you're on tour, it's great. You can sell it. Um, or sell them locally in shops or through a distribution network, great. But shipping them is tough. Shipping cassettes, much easier. Um, again, I forgot the, um, I have like these pink envelopes, padded envelopes from Amazon, very inexpensive um, and very cheap to, to, to ship. I've never had a complaint that a, a, a case got damaged, probably because I don't ship a ton. Uh, and also probably because if, if one did get damaged, I just never heard about it. Maybe they just replaced the case themselves. There are some extra things you can do. You could take these apart, maybe package them, maybe wrap the case a little bit better, but it's not a huge issue. Sound quality. Well, 
sound quality vinyl is superior just because they use a higher frequency audio. Um, also, in most cases, we don't have tape decks and amplifiers, most people don't, that are um, superior. Uh, but when you have a tape that's been uh, made in real time, high fidelity on a great tape, on a great deck, with a great amp, great speakers, uh, up against vinyl, you're getting pretty close. Um, but that's not the point. People don't do this necessarily for the sound quality. I know vinyl is for some people. Um, but with tapes, it's more about that tangible element. It's this pocket size. It's this small little feel. It's a fun project. Um, and the reality is, is that everyone's stereo is different. <clears throat> and so some people listen to Spotify on their iPhone speakers. Some people listen to vinyl on a really inexpensive Crosley deck that has the, um, uh, the speakers built in. And maybe it's sounding mono. Some people listen to tapes uh, in their car, a really old car, or on an old Walkman that chews the tapes. And so sound quality isn't so much of a concern. You can do your part by making sure the audio that you rip from your computer or the, that you send to the manufacturer is really good. Uh, and same thing for your audio for vinyl. Maybe make sure your mastering engineer knows that you're pressing vinyl. Same thing with tapes. Keep that in mind. Fan appreciation. Fans love vinyl. I love vinyl. I collect vinyl. I spend way too much money on vinyl. As an artist, I love to have my records on vinyl. As a record label, I love to have a selection of our labels, uh, titles on vinyl. But it's so costly, and it's costly for fans too. They have to be pretty picky with what records they buy, what artists they support. So you have to keep the, all that in mind. If you're a record label and you're thinking, do I do tapes or do I do vinyl? Don't overestimate how much your fans are going to support vinyl. There are records out there that I would love to have, but I don't because I have to be choosy with what records I buy. I only have a shelf that's so big. I only have a budget that's so big. And so there are records out there that I probably would buy if money wasn't an issue or if shipping wasn't an issue or if shelf space wasn't an issue. Um, but I do have to be choosy. And so that means that um, people are more picky with what records they buy versus what albums they add to their Spotify library. Um, cassettes a little less because it's cheaper um, and you can have a lot more of them and there aren't as many cassettes being made as vinyl being made. So um, I think fans love vinyl for the tangibility. I, I love it for the that intimate process of taking the record out or even first, you know, going through the the collection and picking a record, putting it on the turntable, getting up from the couch and flipping it over side B. Uh, and almost the same thing is true about tapes. I love both. I probably like vinyl a little bit better because I have a great turntable, a great receiver and great speakers in my living room. It's a really nice setup that I enjoy. Um, tapes, I have this setup, um, but uh, I would like a little bit better setup. I, th I feel like there's so many modern day turntables made, but that's the same is not true for cassette decks and for Walkmans, hopefully soon. How do you sell them? Well, um, definitely with records, take them to your local record store. If you have a distributor, congratulations, send it to them. Uh, tapes, the same thing. Take it to your local record store, sell them at shows. Um, I would say the price for tapes, the ideal spot is between five and $10, $10 at shows is not a big deal. Um, people pull out a $10 bill. They want to support you. If you include a link to download the record, then I, I think that's totally fine. Uh, the cheaper, the more you're going to move, but the less profit you'll have. Same thing for vinyl. Um, I know if it's an intricate packaging, this has die cuts. This was a very expensive vinyl to do. It's a colored vinyl. It's a blob um, on clear vinyl. And so I have to sell these at, at least $25, probably 30 if I wanted to make a, a, a proper profit. Um, but if you can sell a record for $18 or $20, then you're just going to sell a lot more. People will be a lot more willing to whip out their credit card uh, in stores or uh, a $20 bill at, at shows. Um, so you can also sell, sell them on Bandcamp. That's a huge home for selling tapes and vinyl. I hope you found that helpful. Go to otherrecordlabels.com for all our resources for independent record labels and for independent artists. Um, I have a tape uh, manufacturing checklist. So go to otherrecordlabels.com slash tapes if you're thinking about making tapes. Uh, thanks so much for watching.